Good afternoon. I'm Gloria Nelson with Tug, and we are so glad to have you join us today for our Tug Connects 365 programming. As you settle in and get ready for the start of today's webinar, let me give a brief introduction for Tug, the usergroup.org, for both our current members and those of you who represent organizations that have not yet joined our online community of Infor Distribution software users. Now, we've all heard the phrase that knowledge is power, and I can say with confidence that after today's presentation, you'll be waking up tomorrow with a little more of both. Tug webinars, online forums, and member events facilitate the timely exchange of ideas and information to help you work smarter and with more confidence. And no matter how you slice it, that's a winning, co winning combination. If you're currently a member, it pays to get even more involved. And if you're not, please visit our website to discover why 2300 heads are better than one to help you be the best at what you do. Now, before we get started, let me touch base on some housekeeping announcements. Buckle up for about 40 to five total minutes today. We'll be going through some great content with invoice pay. So we wanna make sure that your questions don't go unanswered. So open your Q&A bubble, drop those in there. That allows others who are online as well to see what questions have formulated. Now, if we get more than one question and you want yours to really be answered and you wanna give it a little oomph that's already been asked, Make sure that you like that question and it will upvote it to the top of those that are in the queue. Also, open your chat bubble. We'll be monitoring that as well. Feel free to say hello if you see someone online that's asked a question, et cetera, because this is the next best thing to being in a live breakout session. We monitor that too, as I shared. Now, regarding intellectual property permissions, you are invited to take screenshots today and or copy any text and chat history to maximize your experience and have it as a resource that you can drop into a note card. So without any further ado, it is now my pleasure to introduce Mark Penzerini, who is Vice President of Partner Management and Invoice Pay. Mark has been voluntold to be here today because the peer that was supposed to be presenting today actually had another commitment that he had to hop into. So Mark, thanks for jumping in. I know our membership is eager to hear what Invoice Pay has to offer, and I'm going to say go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Gloria. Great to be here today. And yes, unfortunately, Matt couldn't be here. So Mark Pinzerini, Vice President of Partner Management, been uh, in the payment space for a little over seven years. So I'm excited to talk about this today. I love this topic. I love sharing about the whole payment technology side of the world. It's been a fun space for me to be in. Um, so let's see if we can get started here. First of all, a little friendly reminder on any forward-looking statements made in this presentation. Um, it's just some legality stuff that I have to make sure that you've seen, at least on the screen. You'll also see it when you get the presentation, so you can go through that as well. Uh, a little bit more about Invoice Pay. So Invoice Pay is part of a larger organization that's owned by Fleet Corps. Um, we are in the process of changing our name, so you'll probably hear me go back and forth today between Core Pay and Invoice Pay. Um, so Invoice Pay is one of those organizations that is in the payment technology space that is going to fall under the new umbrella of Core Pay, which we're very excited about. Probably still not going to happen for a few months, but um, just to let you know that the name of Invoice Pay is everybody's moving to the new name of Core Pay, so very excited about that. Uh, Gloria, time for our first question to get this kicked off. So what is the biggest AP challenge your organization faces today? Is it supplier payment support and management? Is it managing manual payment processes, minimizing payment fraud and risk, or reducing overall costs? So we'll give you about 35, 45 seconds here to just take a chance to look at that. And um, if you can give me some great feedback, I'd love to hear what this organization uh, thinks is that uh, top AP challenge that they're dealing with today. Again, we're talking about how to create that business case. So it's important for me to understand kind of where you are in your organizational structure and, and, and what you're trying to meet on those challenges. Supplier payment support. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Holy cow. Managing manual payment process is 100%. That's pretty cool. That's pretty exciting. Um, and that's exactly you know, what we try and solve at CorePay today. So I'm very excited to continue to have this conversation with you. And, uh, and we'll just uh, move on here. So when we talk about the challenges uh, in accounts payable, and when you start to talk about how you want to build that business case, right? What you're really trying to understand is, is what is the goal? What are you trying to achieve? Now, according to the poll, obviously, one of the things you're trying to, 
to achieve is to eliminate all these manual payments that you're making. Well, that's the whole focus of payment automation. And again, the whole focus of core pay or invoice pay. So whether you choose that or whether you look at other payment automation solutions, we see these challenges uh, in a, a number of buckets, but they all really fall under what I call operational efficiencies, which again, eliminating manual payments increases those operational efficiencies. Your AP staff is spending less time dealing with these manual processes and more time working on strategic initiatives. So whether it's supplier demand, whether it's dealing with risk and fraud, whether it's dealing with vendor management or just growth management, having your AP staff have more time to focus on those strategic issues and less time on these operational issues is where those efficiencies are gained when you eliminate all those manual checks. So when you look at your manual processes today, uh, some companies are still only have one, it's just checks, right? Some companies have tried to eliminate these manual checks and so they've added additional processes into their workflow. The problem is they're still manual processes and the problem is your AP staff still has to deal with those. So I, this slide really kind of depicts that because we talk to companies every day and they said, yeah, we're eliminating, we're eliminating checks. Well, they are. So now they have an ACH process that they've got to deal with. And now they could potentially even have a virtual card or a card process, but those are still internal, right? So they're still dealing with those. So what you've got now is instead of just one flow of manual checks that you have to deal with, you have three flows or two flows, depending on how much digital work you're doing uh, in order to get your payments out the door. So what that means now is you have three reconciliations to do as opposed to just one. So Sadly enough, you've kind of taken a step back or you're looking at those, at, at those processes and doing them internally. I would encourage you to really look at that as a, as a step back because you're gonna, you're gonna have additional work that you're gonna to need to do. So again, when you're building this case study, I think you need to take that into account. Uh, Gloria, time for another quick question here. Another poll question. There we go. How much of your company's current payments is paper checks? Uh, 76 to 100%, 51 to 75%, 26 to 50%, or zero to 25%. So as I talked about, you've got multiple payment methods that again, you're probably still manually handling internally. So what does that breakdown look like? Are you still on the check side of things? Or are you more uh, getting more in the digital side of the payments? So interested to see where your, where your comments come back or your poll questions come back for that. All right, here we go. Still pretty high number of checks. So how much of your current payment is paper checks? 76 to 100%, 75% said 76 to 100%, 25% said 51 to 75%. And we had nobody between 26 and 50 and zero and 25. So everyone is still pretty heavy on the check side of the house or on the paper side of the house, I should say. All right, so when you look at your payment strategy, that has really started to evolve over the last, well, as long as I've been in this business for the last seven years, it really took a kick up over the last 18 months because of the pandemic. People looked at those manual processes, how much time their staff was dealing with these manual processes and how much they were having to have their staff go into the office to, to you know, generate checks. And then somebody else had to go in and sign checks and somebody had to go in and stuff them. So they've started to look at, well, what, is this, what does this payment strategy need to look like, right? So if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you're gonna see this typical payment mix. So what we see now is starting to evolve is you still have a very heavy check, right? 39% still heavy check, higher ACH, and then you got a breakdown in, in some of the other ones and virtual card's still pretty low on there. But you can see 70% of AP departments are, are working on these payment initiatives. On the left-hand side, you're looking at the traditional payment options, which we've talked about, wire, check, ACH, the hard one, which is not for us, but the hard one for people is the virtual card, right? To get the virtual card payment set up. The reason that's below is because there's a plus sign by the 12. If you start looking at your virtual payments, an average $1,200 payment to your vendor will get you a rebate of $12. Well, that offsets a lot of these other costs. 
So it's important to keep that in mind as we look through here. And when you develop that payment strategy, where, where are you really trying to end up? What do those percentages need to look like? Today, still cost of checks, paper, manual process, very expensive, probably somewhere between five and $14. Um, when we do our analysis and when we do our ROI for our, our, our potential customers or our customers, because we'll do some analysis of this and we'll talk about it later, we even use $3. We try and be very conservative in that number. ACH, everybody thinks ACH is cheap and it is. I mean, to actually generate the ACH is really between 37 and 75 cents. The problem is not that. The problem is getting to the point where you can generate the ACH. High IT staff um, uh, involved in creating what's called a NACHA file. And, and then again, you've got to manage a separate flow for ACH payments that go to the bank. And if there's any issues with that, it's going to come back to you to fix. So there's, there's more than just the cost of the ACH payment. And then your lowest cost is getting virtual cards set up. No cost to you. Rebate, again, as I shared earlier on the other side, so that number can continue to go up substantially. Very exciting when you start to do that. Again, when you start to look at your payment strategy, you, you know, this is a, 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 the AFP payments fraud and survey report. You look at where checks are still today when it comes to fraud, still the highest fraud version. Uh, ACH has gone up and down, checks have gone up and down. Uh, or, or have, have stayed pretty stable there. And um, ACH wires are still pretty high. Card continues to drop, much more difficult. And what we've seen through the last 18 months, again, because of the pandemic and, and coronavirus, is those fraudsters have been really out working on getting those ACH payments transferred to their bank account as opposed to the vendor's bank account. So it's a big deal, and um, we can talk about that in more detail, you know, if you need to reach out to me after the fact, but this, this slide really kind of depicts where the world is today. Um, what I'd like to talk about a little more is invoice pay and core pay and how our flow is. So as I, if you remember, you saw the three flows for the multiple payment methods with uh, a payment technology company like ours. So whether you're doing this evaluation and whether you're coming up with your business case, one of the focuses of that business case should be the fact that there are technology today to allow you to create a single payment file. So, uh, or you, you could look at it as your payment run, or your check run, right? Only you're not generating the check, but you're generating the file that would come to the payment technology like CorePay, where you're selecting those invoices, those invoices are coming to us. We're optimizing the payment based on the supplier enablement process we've done. So we understand what vendor what's, gets to pay, gets, or wants to be paid in, in what payment method. From there, you still have the ability and control to go in and view those before the payments go out. So if you want to stop a payment, just like you would a check where you'd say, no, I'm going to hold this check, stick it in a drawer, right? Or you want to, you want to hold it or you wanna approve it. Well, once you do that approval, those payments are gonna go out next day. So the suppliers are gonna get paid on time. Uh, they're gonna get paid either virtual card, ACH, or again, check if they choose to do that. Uh, but invoice pay is then gonna also take on the supplier support for handling all those payments. But those payments are gonna go out and your reconciliation is gonna be much simpler because you have much more visibility into all of those different payment methods and what's going on instead of you trying to do it on your own. Uh, real quick, uh, we do want to talk about supplier enablement. Uh, I feel that invoice pay and core pay does have best in class supplier enablement. A couple of things that I would keep in mind when you start to build this business case again and when you're starting to do your evaluation is, is all of this happening internally? Uh, invoice pay does everything internally. We don't outsource any of this process. We do it with our own staff and our own people. Um, but we do all of the matching and the vendor su supplier enablement. So we're making the phone calls. We're talking to the vendors. We look at them as our customer uh, as well and just saying, hey, you know, who, how do you want to get paid? Do you want to get paid by virtual card? Do you want to get paid by ACH? It's not a hard sell. We really try and work closely with them to figure out what best works in their world to ensure that they get paid as quickly as possible and as efficiently as impossible. So we're doing all the supplier enablement, continuously setting that up with the payment files that come in uh, and using multiple channels to do that, to drive payments that way. Gloria, this might be a good time. Is there any questions out there that anybody has? 
Oh, you're on mute. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the first question that is populated in, in uh, chat anonymously was, will payment automation impact my scalability? Uh, oh, yeah, hopefully in a good way, right? I mean, the whole purpose of payment automation should increase your ability to scale at a much faster and a much easier pace than you are today. And again, this isn't about eliminating staff. It's about utilizing your staff in a more strategic way. So this gives your staff an opportunity to scale and focus on more strategic issues as opposed to dealing with payments. Any other questions? That's it for right now. So I'm gonna okay. throw it back to you. All right, I'll keep going then, thank you. I think another thing that uh, is very important when you're looking at this, and, and again, we talked a little bit about fraud and risk. Fraud has, has really raised its ugly head over the last 18 months. I think it's it's always something that's been out there. As I shared earlier, you saw the you saw the numbers. I mean, fraud's always there, but whatever you can do to reduce that fraud risk is is really key and really important. And we pride ourselves on that. We've worked very hard from core pace perspective to put the right technology in place, to put the right IT in place, to have the staff available to ensure that our our payments are secure, that our vendor data is secure. So we're we're SOC 1, we're SOC 2 compliant. Um, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money making sure that, that everything we do is to ensure that our customers and our vendors who are our customers as well, that their information is secure. And um, we do a couple of things that I think are unique in the industry when it comes to that. And one of those is we indemnify the customer. So again, when you're looking at this case study, and you're looking at building and doing your review. As a payment technology company, when you send us a payment file, we're gonna indemnify you that those payments are gonna go out correctly and on time to those vendors. And if there's fraud involved, that's on us. So we take on that responsibility and we, we, uh, we believe that it's a very important piece of, of what we do in, in this world today is the whole security piece of this. So it's important that we talk about that. So again, uh, when we, pro we provide the best solution, we provide um, access so you have a availability and visibility into all of the data that goes into making your payments. We also have, again, in-house technical support. So we don't, we don't outsource any of that. Um, if a vendor calls, needs to change their payment method for whatever reason, we get calls all the time, particularly when it comes to checks. So only about 18% of our vendors uh, are being paid by checks. Everybody else is being paid digitally and that number continues to drop. Uh, and so those vendors will call and say, hey, I don't wanna take check anymore or my dog ate the check. Whatever it happens to be, can you help me? We'll go in, we'll change the payment modification on our side uh, and your, your AP staff doesn't have to deal with that. And then again, we do all the payment support. We handle all of the issues around those payments because we're taking on that responsibility again which frees up your staff to do other things i think it's real important when you look at those operational efficiencies whether it's supplier enablement whether it's dealing with ach errors whether it's dealing with stop payments or refunds or reissues all of that stuff is handled by core pay and invoice pay and you don't have to worry about it on your side right so again supplier follow-up uh, and hopefully this all just increases your supplier relationship right, with your vendor because you're not having to deal with all that stuff. You get to deal with the good stuff and your AP staff has to do that. Erroneous payments, we take care of all that once that payment comes to us. Uh, I'd also like to touch base real quickly on what we call our AP Gateway. So this is the tool that you would receive to be able to go in and see your payments see all the payments that were made to all of your vendors, how they were made, when they were made, and all of that. So I'm going to take a few minutes just to kind of step through this with you. Um, you're going to log in. You're going to have a secure login for this. First thing you're going to get is a screen that is what we call a dashboard. This just gives you the ability to go in and you can manipulate this to see what your payment mix in, what your payment count is, how many payments have you made to date, What's your estimated savings? Because again, if you remember, we'll talk about the payment announcement report we do at the very beginning. We're gonna give you some pretty, pretty strong estimates on how much you're gonna save when you move away from these manual processes 
to a payment automation solution like this. So this is just the first screen you can, you can manipulate is the dashboard. The next screen that you're gonna go into is the payments tab. Now that payments tab, as you can see, is you're gonna see every payment file that you've sent to us. So just like, again, you push the button to print the checks, instead of it going to your check printer, it comes to invoice pay. Invoice pay is gonna receive that file and we're gonna put it in here and you're gonna see a list of it. And you're gonna see in here, there's approved and there's a waiting approval. So depending on the ERP system you're using, you have the choice of doing all of the approval process and workflow on your side, or if you don't have that, or you want that kind of last look, just kind of like before you sign the check and put it in the mail, you've got one last look, then you can do the approval process on our side. So that's why some of these say away you need approval. So when you do that, you'll go in, you'll see again, all the payments that have been listed for that particular payment file to go out, and then you can review those and approve those. And that's what this looks like. So you're seeing the vendor, you're seeing the amount, uh, you'll be able to click on the remittance. I'll show you that in a second. You're gonna see the date it's scheduled to go out. And if, and again, we have a very strong approval workflow. So if you have a second approver that's needed, then we can build that into the system. And then you can, you'll also be able to see obviously what payment method was used for that vendor for that payment. So very detailed information. You can download this information, you can manipulate it into a CSV file and do whatever you need to do with it. And I'll show you the reports here in a minute as well. Um, again, once that payment is gone out, you can, you can look up the, the remittance. You can see what the vendor actually received along with their payment. Uh, so you'll have access to all that information. So if the vendor does call you and says, hey, you missed an invoice or whatever it happens to be, you can go in, you can look at the last remittance, you can see what came in the payment file and what was actually paid to them and when it was paid. So all that information is there for you. Very, very easy. Again, it, it's not supposed to be hard. We don't want this to be hard. This should be easy for your AP staff to immediately access information on all the payments, on all the vendors, and, and see exactly where they are today when those payments were made. So we try and make it as simple as possible uh, for your vendors to be, or for you to be able to support your vendors that way. So again, you'll be able to see the remittance, how, what information's on there. You can go in again by vendor name, you can sort those, you can see again when they were paid, what payment method was used, all that information is available to you at that point. Gloria, real quick, any other questions that come up before I go to the next screen? I lost her. Okay, I'll keep I'm going. right. I'm right here. Sorry <laughs> about that. There I've got all that. these. I've got all these windows open. Sometimes <laughs> it takes me a moment to get to the tools. I apologize okay. for that, Mark. Uh, yes, the next question is, what does implementation look like? Mm. Hey, that's a great question. So one of the things we pride ourselves on is not using a lot of your staff's IT, IT time. So we take on the heavy lifting during the implementation process. Typical implementation probably takes anywhere from uh, probably around six weeks. Most of that time has nothing to do with IT. Most of that time is getting your vendor file loaded, getting the configuration set up. So you, again, you can log into the portal and you can see all this information. Um, what we do is we'll work with whatever ERP system you have. And, and again, we're gonna take whatever file comes out of your system, we're gonna map it to our side. So we'll map the fields appropriately. So we know what the payment amount is on your side, we'll map it to what the payment amount is on our side. So we make sure that the payment's correct, all of that information. Quite honestly, over a six week period, I would say there's probably less than two hours of IT time involved. So implementation is really more about that communication, getting the, getting the system set up properly, getting your portal set up so we can receive that file, and then being able to process up payments and showing you how to go in and get the information back out. Sounds great. Well, I'm gonna let you continue on, so back to you. All right, sounds good. So I, again, a reporting is key, right? Um, I think when another question that comes up a lot is we don't wanna lose control, right? We, we wanna make sure we have control over what's happening with our payments and we don't want you to lose control either. So it's real important for us to make sure that you have access to data. And so the reporting information that we have 
is, is pretty extensive and you've got access to all the various reports. As you can see here, there's audit reports. If you're doing international payments, which we have, you can do internet, you know, you can run reports on international payments. One of the nice things, again, because of, of our branding of CorePay, and I don't know if you remember at the beginning, but our, one of our sister companies is Cambridge. Well, they do all of our international payments. They're fully integrated into our product. So again, when you send us a payment file, it's a single payment file. You're not determining whether it's ACH, you're not determining whether it's virtual card, you're not determining whether it's check and international payments. That all comes in the same file. We'll do the work on the backside of that to make sure that everybody gets paid in the proper format and in the proper um, currency as well, which is pretty exciting for us. I think we can do up to 180 countries and about 185 different currencies. I mean, it's a big number that we can handle. But again, you're not creating separate files for that. It can all come in the same file, just like you were print checks for everybody. So we, we have a lot of reports there. If you want to see a check or a report on outstanding checks, you can run that anytime just to see what, you know, what checks are still outstanding because those vendors obviously who didn't move to a digital payment are going to get a check. So you'll want to know that. There's an audit report. There's a history report by vendor. So all of these reports, the reconciliation reports are real important. People love those because again, they're, they're wanting more data to be able to reconcile and reconcile quicker. So we give you access to this information in the portal to be able to do that. So we love that. Um, again, in the slides, you'll see there's a lot of detail on the various types of reports. I would say these are probably the top six that we that we have the most requests for, which is why they're they're built into the system. So you don't have to try and manipulate the system to do it. You can go in, you put the dates in, the date range in that you want to look for, and you can run the report. I think this is probably one of the most important uh, screens within our portal. And because these are your these are your vendors. And like I said, you're our customer. These vendors are our customer. And we look at that very as a very important piece of what we do. So we give you uh, a vendor tab that shows every vendor that we've set up for you uh, that we're going to pay with all of the information in there. And then the main thing is, as you can see, the payment method that the vendor has chosen. So when we do the supplier enablement process, this is real important for us because we'll go through and figure out with the vendor partnering with them to say, hey, how do you want to get paid? What's going to be most efficient? What's going to be the timeliest manner for you to get paid? And then, and then work with them to get that set up. So we'll set up virtual card or we'll set up ACH. And you'll see in here that there's multiple payment methods. They can choose more than one and they may need to sometimes depending on, depending on the size of the payment, all kinds of things come into play there, but we work very closely with those vendors. This is your data. These are your vendors. So you have access to it again, and your ability to download all of these those reports, to download this vendor file at any time, to be able to match that up against your vendor list, just so you can see what payment methods are being utilized. All of that's there for you. So access to the portal is very important. So we, we, we love the fact that you can go in there at any time and get this information. I talked earlier about operational efficiency. Again, ability to access this data quickly. Right? You're not spending hours trying to figure out a report. You're not spending hours trying to generate some new report for somebody. You can go into the portal for CorePay and very quickly generate typically the report that you need. If not, we'll help you build one. But for the most part, they're going to be there for you. And it's going to save your staff a lot of time. So it's just more efficient. So when we talk about the success for accounts payable, um, and when you're looking at that business case, this goes back to my original question, what are you trying to achieve, right? What, what is it that you're trying to get out of this business case that you're building? So is it to simplify the AP payment process? Is it to reduce your risk, to eliminate fraud? Um, is it better supplier relationship, as we said? Is it financial results? Are, you know, are you wanting rebates? Is that what your goal is, right? But when you're looking at all of that, you know, what are the strategies that you're going to use to do that? Understanding your resources and what's needed to achieve these uh, internally can
can make a big difference on how you how you write your business case, right? Fraud again, fraud pre prevention, uh, and and figuring out how do I manage fraud right up front instead of after the fact, you know, is is real key to your strategy. Uh, and then lastly, again, those operational efficiencies, whether it's handling all of the supplier enablement issues, right? Or if you're having to store vendor data and you're in, and you're storing your vendor's banking information. Well, most AP company or most AP staff, that's not really what, where they want to spend their time. And they don't want to risk putting wrong information in. And then again, you're handling vendor AP data or banking data that you really don't want to be handling. So it's that kind of stuff. And dealing with, you know, stop payments and refunds and reissues and those day-to-day -day things that just eat up, you know, your staff time, supplier follow-up, outreach on getting updated information, all of that goes away. So all of those become part of that operational efficiency to simplify your AP process, to gain you not just financial results from rebates, but also from staff being able now to focus on more strategic issues. Um, one thing we're very excited about, and, and I don't know um, how many of you know much about G2, but we kind of, we call it, we kind of, well, we don't kind of, we call it the Yelp uh, for business, right? And so G2 is a place that you can go. If you've never looked, go look up G2. You can look at company scores and see who's gone on there and actually give them some type of rating, which is very important uh, to us. So we look at that very, uh, very strategically and important the way we take care of our customers and the way we take care of our vendors. So top 50 producers uh, or top 50 uh, products for finance. We're very excited about these. these. And so I, I'd encourage you to take some time. Again, if, when you start to evaluate this process of moving to payment technology and, and moving away from doing it internally, right, to using some kind of pay, payment technology company like CorePay, I would look at this. Uh, I also want to talk real quickly. We do what's called a payment analysis report. So anybody out there that, again, wants data for their business case, wants to understand, you know, what's really happening or what your costs are involved in that, we do a very extensive ROI on your payments. So we'll take 12 months of payment information and we will analyze that. And then we will do a comparison on what your costs are today compared to what they would be if you started using invoice pay today. And then what does that look like when what we call steady state or when you get six, eight months down the road, right? What are those, what are those ROIs look like? So what can you expect and what can you put into your business case? It's going to help build that case to say, hey, we do need to go to some kind of payment technology solution or payment automation solution. So this is just uh, an example of one that we've done where we've done, uh, again, we'll analyze your 12 months payments, which is, which is really kind of, I, I mean, it's a good place to start, right? So you take your last 12 months, show us what those, those, those vendors are, how many times you paid them, um, what payment methods did you use, all of that information we're gonna take and we're gonna put in this payment analysis report for you. So it's pretty exciting. Um, Gloria, any other questions? We're getting close to the end here. I think I got a couple slides left. Yes. Um, our first question is populated anonymously, and it says, how does the ERP software get uploaded after you have made payment in the, uh, to the vendors? Okay. I, th I think I understand the question. Um, so if we go back and I'll just try and do a high level flow, you're in your ERP system. You, you've gone in, chosen your invoices, selected the ones that you want to pay, and now created that payment file, typically by pushing the button that you would generate the check, but now it's a file. So that file can come to us electronically and there's several ways and we'll work with you during that configuration time to figure out whether you can do it via API or whether you can transfer it to, it, to us through an SFTP folder, or if you wanna just upload it to us, you can do that as well. Once we get that information, the other thing that can come back to you is what we call a return file, where we can give you back a file for all of those payments. So you know the data was paid, the amount was paid. And the key is we can tell you what payment method was used for all those vendors. And then you can upload that back into your system. Any other questions? Not right now. We'll hold, we'll hold off. And when we get to your last Q&A point, we'll see what, what populates. Thanks What's so left? much. 
Okay. Oh, guess what, Gloria? Should have kept you there. Time for a poll. All right. When it comes to payment automation, what is your organization's top priority? Keeping a great relationship with my supplier, reducing cost, earning rebates, providing multiple payment options, or reducing supplier inquiries. So again, when it comes to payment automation, what is your organization looking to do, or what are the priorities that you're trying to uh, address and resolve? This again goes back to your business case, right? So when you start this business case, these are those priorities. So what is it you're trying to do in, in developing a payment automation solution? Um, I wish we had really time to talk because when I talk to companies, I, I've seen that it'll be interesting to see what your answers are. I think it's shifted over the last 18 months for a lot of companies because of COVID and just how they had to work uh, within their own staff and, and the time that they were spending um, doing this. So it's going to be great to see. Wow. 100% reducing costs and earning rebates. There you go. So again, I think with a payment automation solution like CorePay, you gain both of those. You're reducing your cost, you're becoming more efficient, uh, and you're also getting the rebates. So it's the best of both worlds. We're a technology company, but we're also a service company, right? So we do both, which is really the best of both worlds, like I said, which really helps you as, a, as an organization become more strategic in how you make your payments. Um, thanks so much again for, for having me today. Uh, sorry, I had to pinch hit for you. I hope you feel like you still got some good information out of this. We, we, I like, hope you can tell I love talking about this stuff. I love being part of, of CorePay and being part of the payment space. I think it's a great world to be in, so I'm very excited to be part of it today. We do have one more question for you, Mark. Um, what if a vendor? What if a vendor doesn't want electronic payments and only wants hard copy checks? Well, then we'll give them a hard copy check. So we, like I said earlier, we we do have about eighteen percent of our network, and we're bumping up to about a million suppliers in our network. So a, another thing, when you start looking at these technology companies, I think another question to ask is how large is their supplier network, and how does their supplier network work? So um, for us, about 18% of those are still getting checks, and that's fine. We understand that. So we're going to generate the check. But again, we're taking all of that off of the customer. So we're doing all of the payments. So it doesn't matter to us whether it's a check or virtual card or ACH or whatever the payment method is. No longer is your AP staff dealing with that. So it's not like you have to split it out. But if it's check, we'll pay them by check. Great. Well, I don't see any more questions that have populated at this time. And I want to say, Mark, you did a great job for jumping in from Matt. And <laughs> it has been a pleasure to meet you and to get to hear a bit about what uh, Invoice Pay is doing. So without any further ado, I want to wish you as seamless a transition as I'm sure you provide your clients and bringing that solution with your API to them. So thank you for joining us today and introducing us to Invoice Pay, as well as we wanna say thank you to everyone who joined us online today. And as with most of our webinars, this presentation will be available on our TUG website for future reference and posted to the appropriate forum board with the link for viewing within the next two business days. Now, our next webinar coming up this Friday, August 6th at 2 p.m. is going to feature Della Kofelt, who's going to revisit her TUG Connects 2021 session, General Ledger Balancing in SXE and CSD. And that's a great little taste of TUG Connects. If you did not actually sign up and register and all of that 300 plus content for sessions is going to be available through October 31st. That's like more than three years of webinar content literally available at your fingertips for the next for next couple of months still. So watch your inbox also for the invitation for this webinar. And as always with our upcoming webinar content, it's available for your review and registration on our website. And we'd like to invite those of you who are members of TUG to continue this discussion in our online forums. And also for those of you who are not members yet of TUG, jump on over to www.theusergroup.org and join today. You won't regret it. And as they say in Hollywood folks, that's a wrap. Mm -hmm.